think that producing yes is quite close to how I imagined it. I think the little um, experiences we had along the way doing the quest kept sowing a, a better seed, you know, that we could uh, do this again. <laughs> i tell you one thing about producing, you better not get a lot wrong, <laughs> otherwise you're out. I mean, the producer is supposed to find the answers to all the problems, you know, whatever it is. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, well, maybe if we, you know, that kind of role is, is one of the roles I have. Um, but also I think, I think it was a responsibility that I did understand because I'd seen how others had worked it. And since I first worked with Joe Meek in 1964 <laughs> and saw, you know, just how that person who is producing has to do something and he has to get it right because, you know, the other guys aren't so sure. And also the other guys may have mixed opinions and therefore what a producer's partly doing is, is, is using his imagination to, to steer it in a way that, that will create harmony and everybody will like it you know not even if it's one person's idea if somebody comes in left field with something and and i was to put it to the test and it worked everybody would be happy you know so i think i've been quite delighted how the guys have responded to my encouragement and my ideas and my decision making but that's not anything like an exclusive role that i'm playing it's very much in in in, in conjunction with team thinking and how this has got to work here. Oh, that's got to work there. Uh, I think a producer would be very silly to think blindly, horribly, you know, that he can just go right down the middle and say, you know, whatever you think, it's what I think. You know, what, what I develop as my thought train it is a combination of what other people like as well. So I, I think it's pretty much like I, I, I did imagine it, um, if not better. One of the other ingredients that I did suggest, which worked beautifully on the quest, and we've we've done it slightly differently on, on Mirror to the Sky, is having Paul K. Joyce do arrangements for orchestra in, in particular places. In other words, this is not an orchestra takeover where the whole record's got these guys going like this all the time. No, we just use it, you know, for effect and, and particularly we use it for a section we can give them you know and, and but we play around you know we play at the bookends of it so that happened on dare to know on the quest that was the first idea i had i said guys could we try this you know are you agreement you know it'll cost a it'll happen then and you know we can do these things so we gave it a try and as we were doing dare to know we realized that we the orchestra we were using was actually in macedonia so that almost shows you the the, the length and breadth of the internet uh, file sharing system we were using and everybody can use. So Paul K. Joyce wrote up several pieces for uh, the quest, particularly Dare to Know. So when it came to Mirror to the Sky, uh, that was the song title at the time when we started, of course, not the album title. So I said to Paul, uh, hey, this is coming around again. I mean, I've got an idea. How about you come in on this title maybe not do so much on the rest of the album but come in on this title and um hey you know there could be a, a moment the orchestra could like take over from us but then we're going to come in after you and you know we're going to chase you out kind of thing so um that's how the track expanded to a near 14 minute piece because we um partly because we gave the orchestra and we developed more song work uh, and arrangements in it. So uh, having an arranger is, is, is a wonderful experience because we are arrangers as well. And that's one of the things Yes has always been very proud of is that, yeah, you can take a song. Sometimes it's somebody else's like, you know, Paul Simon's America gives you an example of the skills that, that Yes had because they were doing covers anyway before I joined, you know, in the late 60s uh, along with their own song. So having Paul do arrangements on this uh, new record uh, was really exciting. And again, we knew he was going to primarily do Mirror to the Sky as the, as the biggest piece. But hey, you know, what about this song? So Paul came here and we listened through to the songs and he picked out the ones he thought could benefit, you know, from he could definitely envisage something going on. So he wrote up a few other tunes and uh, 
I guess one of them maybe we didn't take to. And I mean, we hear demos of these. So that's what he does for us. Uh, I check the demo of how he's thinking the orchestra is going to work. So it all happens in different degrees. Sometimes the like luminosity, you don't get much until the end. You know, and then the orchestra are joining us. Mirror to the sky, as I say, has got there's a lot of a lot of orchestra in that one, but it's very much never swamping the band. You know, uh, which is which is the whole idea. So that to me, when that came back from Macedonia and we put it into the tracks, started building towards the mixing that were that we you're going to hear then that was really one of the most exciting times. Yeah, I think just that little, it, it, it's its not what you use, it's how you use it. And I think we've managed to do that to our satisfaction and Paul's. Paul's very pleased with the way we've uh, we've um, mixed that. So there's some nice, nice unusual, that it starts with a little bit of orchestra too, the whole album. The Ice Bridge started with, um, with the kind of horns, uh, you know, orchestra horns. But this time, um, Mirror to the Sky, they come in a bit further down once we've established the whole, uh, the whole uh, the intro of the song. But uh, so that, that's a high spot for me, orchestra. The two aspects of whether you're playing your music or whether you're playing other people's music are both terrific channels to go down. So um, I've been lucky enough to do both a lot. And uh, yeah, developing a song that I've written was always very, actually very hard for Yes. <laughs> it was an unusual thing in the 70s, how a solo piece by me just, it just wouldn't kind of get through the barbed wire. But if I wrote with John, then John Anderson, bless him and love him. Uh, we wrote some great music together and that always just went through smoothly. Writing music for a band requires an openness of your expectations of, of how that can develop. So I look forward to that when Yes play a piece by me. I think it's great. And if John gets on the lyrics and likes those lyrics, you know, it all develops a feeling of excitement. But, but conversely, yes, when I'm playing a song maybe by John and Billy or something, then I'm really in a great place because I can, I can sort of um, throw off some of the other familiarity. And in fact, I might even be scared. That I don't know what the hell's going on with this song. How, how does this song work? But I want to get in it and I get in it purely, you know, as a guitarist. So I find that time really nice. Not only can I consider, can the guitar do something nobody thought of yet or can I take a theme and maybe play it here you know and take it to a different sound yeah I opened the book of my own ideas about uh, what guitar to play and how much I might texture whether I'm going to be the guitarist is mainly playing single lines on this song or, or do we need a lot of you know rhythm guitar or do we need some power stuff so it might be a mix of that and that's usually what it is it's a mix of having a good front lead line here and there and also uh, providing the right sort of texture when guitar texture can be very effective and uh, in balance with with keyboards i wouldn't want to do i mean solo album is you know for me is just one of those facets so um but that doesn't limit me in in either way i don't feel limited in either way of course you know if i'm doing my own music i can invite who i like to to add to it and generally Dylan, my son Dylan Howe, has been drumming on all my records since uh, the grand scheme of things. So he's been my greatest collaborator. The music that comes through from other songwriters, yeah, it offers me a, a kind of different way of looking at my guitar work because on my own music, very often I've got the parts, you know, I've, I've kind of even got the sound in my head, I've recorded it. But on their songs, I've got to say, okay, well, that's going. Uh, how do I fit in with this? You know, how do I get my thing in there somewhere? And um, that's really very enjoyable. 